right guys, welcome back to another video. So the goal for today is to get this blanket chest hopefully done. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done to it uh, in order to actually get to that completed stage, but I think that we can do it. So the very first thing I need to get done here is the lid. Because we still have our breadboard ends sticking up here, we have a dowel sticking out. Overall, it doesn't look very good right now, so we need to go through and get this all cleaned up and ready to go. Once I've got this cleaned up, I'm going to take a run down to Lee Valley to go get all the hardware for this chest because I've been kind of putting off doing that until the very last day here for some reason. But yeah, I'm going to run down there, pick up the hardware that I already have on order, so it should be a nice, quick pickup. Okay, quick change of plans. I forgot that on the back side of the breadboard ends here, there's a couple spots where I blew it out. I forgot to put a point in the dowel when I was pounding it in, uh, so it did. So it blew out a little bit on the grain on the outside here. Really dumb mistake, something that I'll definitely remember when I do this next time. So I just went back in, just glued down these pieces that kind of got split out. And so now you gotta let that glue cure for at least a couple hours before I start doing anything with it. So we can't actually do anything on the lid just yet. So instead of working on the lid, I'm gonna get our milk paint components all fully finished up, you know, get them fully cleaned up. Uh, then I'm gonna start working on some of the internal areas of the chest and then we'll work on the outside areas of it. Uh, hopefully once we're done everything else, then we can work on the lid and get this finished up. And this will be the last thing we have to do for the, in the entire project before we're applying and finished everything. Okay, so I actually ran down to Lee Valley in between those two clips there, and I got all of the hardware we're gonna need to finish off the blanket just here. So I've got our brass hinges, a whole bunch of brass screws, and then a chain that's gonna hold all this whole thing together, and I don't know if I got screws for the chain. Oh, it comes with screws. Whew, okay, lucky. So all this hardware together was actually pretty expensive. Because we went through with all brass hardware throughout the entire chest here, it's well, it was about 84 bucks for the whole thing. But then again, this bag of 100 brass screws was 15 bucks alone, so I can't count that whole thing into this chest. We are gonna be using quite a few of these here, probably not 100. The other thing I picked up while I was at Lee Valley was some brass barrel bolts. So in the video where I built the tray, I got a comment from James Reed asking how I'm actually gonna lift the tray in and out of the chest. Now my thinking is because it's not a super tall tray, it's only about three and a half inches tall, it's not hard to just kind of get your hands around and get your hands underneath it to lift it out. I don't like when you have a tray like this that's floating in a space like this and you cut handles into the side because then when you fill stuff into this tray, you know, inevitably if you're putting like, you know, if you're using this as an actual blanket chest and you're keeping like linens or blankets in here, when you go to stick your hand in, you got to kind of fight your way through those linens in order to actually wrap your hand around that handle. So I don't like doing that, which is why I was just planning to leave it just normal like this. But while I was replying to his comment, I had kind of an epiphany on how I actually could do the handles in a pretty cool way, and that is using barrel bolts and some leather. So you can see my little test piece right here. So this is an off cut of the same piece we used to make the tray. Uh, I've got a barrel bolt right through the middle there and then this piece of uh, I think it's eight ounce leather uh, that we're gonna have to use for the, for the handles. On the inside of the tray we're gonna be using this uh, brown much thinner leather. I believe this is uh, three or four ounce leather uh, but for these handles the only thing that's gonna work is this really thick uh, eight ounce leather. So I'm gonna make the handles then we'll figure out how to lay them out on the actual tray because now I have to be very delicate on what I'm doing with the tray because I don't want to cause any massive tear out and I don't want to damage the nice milk paint finish that we have on there now.
Okay, so there's a little handles and we've got one attached to the actual tray itself. Now I have to go back in and stretch this so you can actually get your hand in there because right now it's pretty tight. Uh, but I don't want to do that because it requires the handle be mounted where it needs to be and it requires dampening that leather so you can actually stretch it a little bit and I don't want to risk messing up the milk paint right now. That's also why I have these pieces of paper stuck in here because we have water and alcohol dye on the uh, leather. I didn't want it mixing with the milk paint or doing anything weird. So I just got that on there temporarily. Once we get the oil on the milk paint, that'll seal it in and that way it'll be fine if we get a little bit of water or anything else on it. But for now, this paint could still be reactivated if we got a bunch of water on it. So I want to avoid doing that. But I really love how these handles look and the best part about it is they're super simple. So I'm going to disassemble all the stuff and we're gonna get some oil on all this milk paint. That way I can set it aside, let that start carrying out and then we can start working on the actual body of the blanket chest and getting that all cleaned up. So you can see just how much the oil really affects the color of the milk. It does the same thing as like when you're looking at walnut. You know, walnut, and you know, before you oil it, it looks pretty flat, kind of unappealing. But as soon as you put oil on it, it looks spectacular, nice and dark. Same thing with the milk paint here. It darkens up our paint quite a bit and makes it look really good. Now, while I was doing this, I was trying to think what color this is reminding me, you know, what thing this is reminding me of. And I finally realized it's the, I think it's the 2021 uh, special Tacoma paint color. Uh, they have this like forest green in that. Anytime I've seen them in person, because I, I think that they're super ugly because they went with like a high gloss paint, which I think looks really stupid. But in this case, this color, when it's all nice and matte, it's gonna look amazing. So now we're gonna let these pieces cure up. I wanna make sure I add at least one more coat of oil to them before I actually go through and install them. So there is one thing that I am gonna have to take some time to try and figure out and learn how to work with with the milk paint, and that is around the edges and stuff. So on all of the bottom slats here, right along a lot of our edges, we do have some raw ash poking through. Now in this case, I think it looks really cool. It's a nice little highlight detail on the edge, but I think in a bigger piece of furniture, like I have planned later on to do with milk paint, uh, I don't know if, it, I think that that would look pretty bad. So looking at the tray here with our curved edges, we do a little bit better, but there's definitely some areas where I'm hitting a little bit either too hard or just I'm not getting enough paint in those areas when I'm sanding them. So I'm gonna have to try and figure out something. I think the solution might be that on the surface, I wanna hand plane as much as possible so we get good absorption of the uh, of the paint. But on the edges, like on these pieces where I cut them with the table saw or on the tray where I cut them with the router, I probably have to go back in there and sand them with like 120, 150 grit, something so that they're a little bit of a rougher surface. Because I think when you're cutting with either the table saw or the router, I think that's both cutting the wood but as well as slightly burnishing it. Cause that's what seems like it might be happening is if those, are, if those surfaces are kind of burnished and they're not able to soak in any of that watery milk paint, that might be what's causing it. The other thing I could try is increasing the amount of water in my milk paint. Cause right now I'm doing a two to one mixture, which I found is pretty standard. But if you go by the direction of the actual jar here, it recommends a one to one mixture. I know when I first picked up milk paint, I was playing around with it. I tested that one to one mixture and I found it didn't seem like enough like a paint. Uh, so I went to the two to one and that seemed to work out a little bit better, but maybe I can dial that back to like one and a half to one, something like that. So I definitely have a little bit more learning to do with milk paint before I take it on to a much bigger project. But in this one, I think this looks awesome. So we're gonna set these pieces aside. I'm gonna pull the main case up on the bench here. I'm gonna start working on that, just getting it cleaned up, doing all the final sanding work and all the cleanup work. That way, hopefully over the next couple days, I can start putting this stuff together as I get the oil nicely cured up. Thank you. 
Okay, so we got the case all cleaned up now. It's looking really good. I'm gonna work on some of the other parts in just a minute here, but I wanna start by getting the hinges installed on the case here. So we just need to cut a small mortise to get them installed because these are an extruded uh, brass hinge. I think that's the right terminology. Now the thing that kind of sucks here is that these are the hinges that I'm gonna be using. They're the extruded brass hinges from Lee Valley. I paid 26 bucks for the pair of them and they are not very good. The hinges I was planning to use were these ones right here, but, but you can kind of start to see the problem here. Is this one is dark, almost black. This one is nice shiny brass, like the rest of the hardware in this thing. Because now that we have the brass chain that's gonna be holding the lid and you know, preventing it from you know falling all the way open, we've got the brass barrel bolts in the tray. I figured that we kind of had to go with brass hinges rather than going with the nice dark color like I had initially wanted to do. Now, I don't normally work with just plain brass hardware, which is why when I ordered from Horton Brasses all these really nice hinges, I ordered them all in this dark black color because I like the way this looks more with like my white oak, walnut, all those projects. Even with this project, I think that this would look better, but it's purely because we have all this brass hardware in here that I'm going to, that I'm using this brass stuff. Now, if I'd known I was gonna do this, I probably would have hopped on and ordered some brass hinges from, uh, Horton Brasses because those are way more worthwhile. I believe that it's uh, 14 or $15 Canadian for this set. Uh, whereas, like I said, this small set from Lee Valley was 26 bucks. And these are, you know, stiff as possibly can be. They're not very nice. Uh, the back side, these holes are obviously punched. So I'm gonna have to go over and flatten these faces. Whereas these ones from Horton Brasses for literally half the price are not only a little bit larger, but they also are completely smooth. They have all been, they've been completely flattened on the back. So they're just a much, much better hinge. So yeah, I don't I don't like buying the hardware from Lee Valley, but on kind of short notice with this project, I kind of didn't have a choice. And the dumbest part of this is because I spent $26 on this set of hinges, I also didn't get screws, which is why I had to buy a $14 bag of screws because I can't buy a 10 pack of screws because there's more than 10 screws in here. So I really, sometimes I really hate Lee Valley, you know, most of the time they're okay, but sometimes they're really stupid. <laughs>
Okay, so we are now are nicely hand sanded up to 180 grit. I replaced the screws in the top on the uh, tray supports. I replaced them with the brass ones and I think they look a lot better than the black. They blend in a little bit better with the cherry, so I'm happy about that. Right where we glued the frame to the base, we got all that squeeze out. So obviously that was uh, not really a good area to get a bunch of squeeze out because you're right between a roundover and the main case. It was kind of a trick to get in there, but luckily with the raveting plan, I was able to cut a nice line all the way through there, then go back in and sand it vigorously with 180 grit uh, until it, I'm hoping that I got rid of all the glue stains. So I only have about an hour left at the shop, so it's not enough time to get started on the lid. So we're gonna be doing at least one more video for this project as I get the lid done. But for the most part, the case is completely finished. So, and so what I can do in this last hour here is just apply the first coat of finish to the chest here uh, and just get that done and out of the way. Okay, so there is the main component of the blanket chest actually all finished up. And I always forget how nice cherry looks once you actually get some finish on it. Because unlike woods like walnut or white oak, you know, it's, it's one of those woods that I, I don't think about right away for a project. And in fact, in most cases, I would say that I don't like cherry until I get to the point where I put some finish on it and I actually see it and I remember what the heck it looks like. I remember that it actually is a really nice looking hardwood. So it's one of those things that I gotta kinda get over my head. For me, cherry just seems like the cheap alternative, you know, the not great option. But the other side of it is I also haven't done very many. I think I've only used cherry in three, maybe four projects. So it's definitely a wood I wanna work with more because it's a lot less expensive than walnut or white oak. It's a nice kind of medium brown color that you don't really get in any of the other woods. So I'm definitely gonna be doing more with cherry over the next little while here. Uh, because I do definitely think it is a nice hardwood that is not super expensive to work with, so it lets you do more projects, which is always a bonus. But anyway, for this project, I'm using tried and true original oil. So you guys know that I'm a huge fan of tried and true oils just all around, some of the best finishes in my opinion, uh, because it's all natural. So I chose to use the tried and true original oil here because it's the mixture of linseed oil and beeswax, and I find that the finish it leaves leaves a nicer tactile feel. It's a little bit softer, uh, and overall has a, a more matte finish compared to the varnish oil, which I use on most of my furniture projects, which has a little bit of a smoother, glossier finish to it. So I think the Trident Joe original oil is gonna look amazing when it's all cured up here. So in about an hour, I'm gonna come back out, wipe off all the excess oil, because you can see it still looks pretty oily. Uh, and then I'm gonna leave it overnight, and then tomorrow I'll apply another coat. But we're gonna call it a day there. We did get some pretty good progress done. I was not expecting to get finished on here today, but I was hoping to get the lid done. So we're kind of one step forward, one step back kind of thing. So we're, we're kind of right where I theoretically would have expected us to be. But all we have left to do now is to get the lid done, get the hinges mounted on there, and then this little thing is done. So I know that a lot of you guys don't love the longer drawn out series, but this is just what's gonna kind of happen with the daily videos. Some projects are gonna get dragged out, some projects are gonna fly right past. So it really just depends project by project. But anyways guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.